Hey, there's Joe again, and today we're going to do a what I promise will be a shorter video, uh, at least under an hour. Uh, and the purpose of this video is going to show you guys how to set up your ProFlight trainer in DCS. So this isn't going to be a uh, a module specific setup. Uh, we're going to go over just the basics. So if you're new to the ProFlight trainer and you want to fly it in DCS, uh, this is this is really who this this video is geared towards. If you are already a DCS user with the uh, Puma and you got it set up where you like, hey, keep doing what you're doing. But uh, for if you got you think you might need a little help, uh, this video might help you out a little bit. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna go up here to our options menu, click on that, and we're gonna look at our controls and all the control um, the control adjustments we're gonna do we're gonna do in the sim section. So when I say sim section, you can see for each module there's a sim and game. Uh, these are all going to be for the simulator portion. So, for example, we're going to start with the UH1, and we're doing this in the new two point, uh, DCS 2.1 build. Uh, I just got it downloaded, and I haven't set it up yet. So this is a perfect time to go over this with you guys and show you how I set my system up. Uh, so this first part we're going to do, uh, and this is the kind of stuff that's kind of mandatory. So we're going to go to... Uh, our option over here and we're going to select axis commands and they'll bring up our options menu and here's where we need to change a few things around okay so uh, these three axes are collective that's that's correct on the uh, the z-axis uh, cyclic pitch y-axis that's correct cyclic roll on the x-axis that's correct now this one a rudder control which is basically our anti-torque pedals here that is incorrect. That should say, I want to say Romeo X-Ray, or X for that. So if you were to jump right into DCS with, after plugging in your, your profile shader, and this works for the Black Lynx or the Puma, um, you'll notice that your pedals don't work. And that's why, if you come into the axis command, you'll see that this is the wrong axis. And it's really, really easy to fix. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click on it. It's going to bring you the assignment panel. And basically, all you have to do is move the pedals uh, in order to get it to recognize that axis. Okay, so there we go. Enjoy our X. That's what we want. Click. And I made the mistake I always do. Okay, so you can see it made a double uh, assignment here. You don't want that. Uh, so it's best to clear out that assignment first before you make the adjustment. So you just hit the clear button. It makes it go away. And we'll go through it again. And all we have to do is move the move the proper axis. So I just move the pedals. You can move them left or right. Doesn't matter. And there we go. That's all we needed to do. Now sometimes uh, with some of these modules, it will be reversed. So if you push the right pedal, the left pedal uh, will go in the sim. And to do that, to fix that, you go to the axis tune menu right here, and then you can invert it. Okay. So it, and I'll give you an example here. It'll just swap it around and then it'll be correct. And that's only if you start messing with it or go in the sim and your your pedal inputs are reversed. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is set up the throttle. So and we can look down here uh, for our throttle axis and we see we have nothing. So we have to do the so instead of having to clear it, all you have to do is double click on it. And then going to the twist grip on your collective in your ProFlight trainer, just give it a rotate and it'll recognize the the proper axis, click OK, and there you go. So that's basically all you need to get set up and running. All right, now let's talk about preferences. Uh, most people uh, have questions about this, so we're going to talk about it real quick. So when it comes to setting up your flight controls for what I think is the best, the most realistic feel, and keep in mind this is all my preference. Some folks out there might have a different take on this, uh, but this is just the way I I set my flight controls up. So we'll start up here with the pitch axis here. And we're going to go back to the axis tune menu. And here we see in our box, and this is what we're looking at right here, is our uh, our dead zone saturations and curvature. So dead zones, I recommend that you leave it at zero, in, unless you have a joystick that has some, uh, a self-centering joystick that has some, uh, what do you call it, like noise, a digital noise in the uh, in the center axis. So basically, if you're experiencing this, you would see some uh, rapid movements, or or you might be experiencing some uncommanded control inputs while you're in the sim. Uh, so it might look something like this. 
when we're uh, searching for it. So if you get that, that's when you would use a dead zone. Uh, and that's when at the center position, when you're not touching it. Um, so what that does is if you increase the Z zone, you can see that arc, that, that, that lateral line there, uh, excuse me, that diagonal line sort of flattens out. And in that flat area, the, your computer isn't going to recognize any movement in there. So you can see as I move the, uh, you can see with the red dot, it's my joystick moving, my cyclic moving. Uh, it's moving, but the black box, which represents what the computer's picking up, isn't moving. Um, so now as we move out of that dead zone, then we get movement. So unless you have uh, some uncommanded movements from the center position that you don't want to be picked up, you shouldn't be using a dead zone. Okay, that's what that's for. There's a lot of interpretations of what dead zones are and what they do, uh, but in reality, all, all it's there for is to get rid of uh, any sort of uncommanded inputs when the stick is centered. So if you're using the ProFlight Trainer, take the Z dead zones to zero, okay? Uh, also, saturations uh, for X and Y, leave those at 100. Uh, you can adjust them a little bit if you really, really wanted to, but if you're flying helicopters with the PFT, you don't really need to. Um, so you can see we're going full throw fore and aft here because we're doing the, uh, the pitch axis. So if you really wanted to, you can bring down this saturation down to right about there. So about 97%. So now your uh, your cyclic is using 100%. Well, your cyclic's only using 97 or 96% of the throw here. Um, but you, you hardly ever go full throw, and at that point, it's just like two, three percent. So you won't, you're not going to notice that. So I leave both of mine at at uh, at 100%. Curvature for helicopters. I uh, for helicopters, I leave the curvature at zero. Um, because you really want to get everything you can out of this out of your axes and when you start messing with the curves here either left or right what you're doing is you're kind of desensitizing the center portion so remember how we were messing with the dead zone uh, when you increase the dead zone it went flat so the flatter this is the less sensitive uh, that axis is so of course the center you can see it getting a bit more flat and that's kind of mellowing out those control inputs around the center and you can see it kind of gets a little crazier as you get to the outer portions. And by crazier, I mean um, more sensitive, because the more vertical that line goes, the more sensitive it gets. So I leave my curvature at zero. I, I've, that's, and I think that's the way uh, the DCS modules are designed for the, for the more advanced modules. I'm not talking about the Flaming Cliff stuff, but for the UH-1 and the K-50 and MI-8, all that stuff, I recommend leaving your curvatures at zero. And that's for helicopters or helicopters. Uh, so if you're gonna use your ProFlight Trainer for other things like I do, and other things meaning, uh, of course, fixed wing, um, and we'll use the Spitfire here as an example. Um, so I fly my fixed wing stuff with my ProFlight Trainer as well. It works great for uh, flying airplanes and jets. Um, and if you wanted to, you could, uh, use uh, an extra a different throttle if the collective using the collective is kind of weird for for fixed wing like i have an x52 throttle that i throw on there sometimes uh but the the profile trainer works great for fixed wing um and seeing how it's in uh, most of these have floor mounted control columns or cyclics or whatever you want to call them it, it works really well except the pedals so the pedals are a little bit sensitive for uh fixed wing flying so we're going to go back to access commands i'm going to show you what i have set up here so for rudder going to access tune again i did set up a bit of a curvature for the rudder i found the pro flight trainer pedals are the sensitivity in there is perfect for helicopters it's a bit too much for airplanes um so I did add about a 10, 10% curve to the right for my pedals. Uh, and I did the same thing for my F5 and my P51. Not as much on the F5, but P51, I, I, did, I set up again uh, about a 10% curve for there. Okay, so that's my recommendations for dead zones and curves. Uh, but for the most part, for helicopters, I leave everything, uh, everything's pretty much the same. Uh, so we did what we did pitch first. We'll look at my my roll settings here. Uh, yep, yeah, see uh, zero zero dead zone. We don't need it. And curvature 
uh, leave them at zero, okay? So now let's talk uh, some button configurations. So for, we're just gonna use the UH1 as, the, as an example. And I'm gonna take you guys out of DCS just for a minute. And we're gonna look at, uh, so if you're not familiar with the ProFlight Trainer, um, you've got several options, uh, for three options actually, for all of your buttons here. So we've got all of, here's the Cyclic, and this is an, an official ProFlight Trainer product. This is something I came up with uh, to help me keep track of my buttons here. Uh, so uh, the, your trigger button is trigger one is button one down here at the pinky button two three four and so on five six on the collective and this is the top down view this is a side view uh, now you have a toggle switch on your collective uh, and it's the black one and you also have the red one red one pretty much functions as another button really so if you push it forward it's button seven if you bring it back it's button eight and all of these button configurations is how the computer sees your ProFlight trainer when the black switch is in the center position. Okay, that's important. Um, now, if you bring the button, to the black switch to the aft position, you, you basically get a brand new set of buttons. So this becomes button 11, this becomes button 12, 13, 14, uh, 15, 16, and so on. Now, if we go put the uh, black switch to the forward position, you guys can tell what's gonna go what's gonna happen here. Um, Oh, hang on. Oh, that's there we go. Forward position. Now the buttons change again. Now you have button 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. And that's with the black switch in the forward position. So here is my uh, rationale for uh, my button assignments in DCS. So I always start with uh, my assignments with the center position. And the center position are all of my flight related functions. Okay. So, uh, for example, uh, and though actually there's one exception for that. We'll start with that exception. So, for engine start, I've got uh, the starter button uh, set to button five, and the um, throttle increase function set to button six. Now, you're asking, why do you have a throttle increase map to a button when you have a twist grip on your PFT? Well, if you watched uh, the second video in my DCS uh, UH1 review or flight accuracy, flight accuracy test, uh, you can you remember me saying that the throttle, the twist grip on the PFT does not function until after the throttles pass the idle detent or idle setting. So I use button six to roll the throttle to idle and then after it's there, I can use the twist grip. So that's why I have button six map as, map as that. Now on the other hand, uh, with the black switch in the aft position, I have button 15 mapped to the throttle release, so the idle release button, which in the real aircraft, when you roll the, uh, the throttle to idle, there's a button there that you press that will allow you to roll past the idle detent and shut the fuel off to the engine. And that's what that button does. So I have button 15 mapped to that and button 16 mapped to the throttle decrease. So once we get it to idle, the, the uh, twist grip doesn't, doesn't work anymore after, after you get to the idle position. It won't go any further. That's when I use button 16 to roll, actually roll the throttle off and shut down the engine. Okay, so that's, that's a bit how I use the uh, the multifunction switches here that we have via the black switch. All right, and it's really simple. So when I want to start the engine, the black switch goes to the center position, and I'm using these controls. When I'm shutting down the engine, I'm putting the black switch to the aft position, and I'm using these buttons. Uh, and everything else you can do however you like. Now my uh, thought process is I do normal flight functions when I'm when I'm talking about uh, the other switches here and buttons normal flight functions are done with the black switch in the center position so I have the throttle in the uh, rpm increase and decrease switch set to button seven and eight so the so the beep switch or the ink or decrease switch whatever you want to call it I set that set to button seven and eight so increase throttle of seven decreasing it not throttle but the increase rotor rpm is seven and decreases eight. Um, and for weapon systems, 
I put for the black switch, the black switch forward, this is how, this is where I map all my weapon systems. So there's no confusion. So I'm ready to go hot. Black switch goes forward. Button 21 and 23 are my weapons release triggers. This is, and this, I do this for all of my DCS modules to keep everything straight. So I map all of my um, weapons release or weapons related functions that aren't uh, keyboard related to the, uh, to the black switch forward position button. So that's the two series button. So two, one, two, 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 three, two, four, and so on. And with this black switch function, you also get three separate hat switches. Okay, so the hat switch here works um, and is recognized as different hat switches in the center, aft, or forward positions. So you can use that to your advantage. Uh, if you want to use the trim system, you can, I would recommend putting that to the center position and then like, like I said, for normal flight functions and using that as trim. And if you want to use it for other things like I do, uh, so when I have it in the aft position, that's uh, manually adjusting my view. So if I need to push my viewpoint to the left or right, I, or forward or backwards with the, in the aft position, I can do that and not interfere with anything else. And that helps for VR. If you're flying with Oculus Rift or HTC Vive, uh, you can map your hat switch to pan your view, not pan, but uh, move your view left, right, up and down to center yourself or center your viewpoint in the cockpit. Okay. So going back to DCS, I'll just show you guys a little bit of that and we'll go to the, um, let's see here, where's the collective? There you go. Okay, so you can see, here we go. So this is basically what I described there. Okay, so engine startup, I have set to button five. And again, that's with the black switch in the center position and the throttle up button six, as I showed you guys. and and you can really, really take advantage of all of these buttons that you have in, uh, with the ProFlight Trainer. That's one of the great advantages of it, because you get basically three whole sets of buttons on one uh, set of flight controls. All right, one last thing I want to talk about. If you're using your ProFlight Trainer with a, VF, uh, a VR headset, uh, like I do, I use the Oculus Rift, and um, you can it's actually pretty beneficial to set up some of your buttons uh, with VR. So here we are in the controls menu again, and here we're looking at the UI layer, and you can see it's usually all the way at the bottom of, uh, of that menu here. Uh, and a couple of useful things to map to your, uh, your ProFlight Trainer is uh, recentering your VR headset. I have that set for button 12. Uh, and use as right mouse button. I have button 14 set for that, and left mouse button. I have button 11. Uh, and we'll, I'll take you to picture here. So 12. This is what I have to reset my my view, just in case something gets a little weird, a little wonky. I can fix it. And button 14 and 11. So 14 and 11. That way I have my mouse functions, my mouth clicks, my mouse clicks uh, in game in in my hand so I don't have to use take my hands off the controls and go get a mouse. And when you're using these controls, uh, it's basically using your line of sight as the mouse. So you, you click uh, your left mouse button, or in this case, button 11, in, in my, the way I have it set up, and you get a little blue dot, you can put it on the control you want to manipulate, and you pull or push the, the button that you like. That's how I have it set up. You can have it set up however you like, uh, but that works for me. Um, and again, that's with the switch, the black switch in the aft position. And I do that on purpose. That way uh, I've got two other options as far as cyclic button goes to map to other things for normal flight controls or uh, weapon systems. But with the black switch in the aft position, these become my mouse controls and my center position controls, and that's really handy for VR.